Hey Nathan, this week we got a great topic for talking cars, and you know what that is? Uh, cars that we really want but can't have, something yeah, like that? Yeah, exactly. Cars that manufacturers should import immediately into the United States. Because uh, there are a lot of cars that they sell in Europe that we don't get, and these cars would sell like hotcakes here. I agree. It's kind of the attitude of no soup for you, right? Yeah. I don't know why they don't import them. You know, over the last, what, 10 years, we've scratched our heads wondering why these cool cars are not coming to America. And actually, some of them we've even driven. Yeah, I know. That really ticks me off. All right. So coming up on this episode, sit back and relax. Keep driving if you're driving. We're going to be talking about cars that they should import in 2021. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's get right to it after our open. Sit back and relax or keep driving if you're driving. TFL Talking Cars is on the air, the world's most popular car podcast. Okay, maybe not yet, but we're working on it. All right, Nathan, uh, let's just jump right in. The number one car, this list is in no particular order. We just kind of had fun putting it together. You're right. All right, is the Fiat 500, but the E. That's right. Now, this is an all-new car. This isn't the old Fiat 500e, which was like kind of a halfway there. There's a California you know, like a, compliance car. Right, right, right. 80 right. miles of range. Yeah, it's cool, but, but, you know. They didn't even want to build it. They yeah, didn't Sergio it, didn't even want to sell the damn thing. But this is totally different. This 500e was built from the ground up, and it is a really cool little car. Up to around a 200 mile range, give or take, even more if you drive in a city cycle. It has this cool little clam doors on one side, and it's a slick little car. It's what the Fiat 500 should have been, oh, well, years and years ago in the American market, but it's not for our market, which sucks. Yeah, I think it was like almost four years ago now that Sergio came out and said that by 2025, you know, FCA was going to have all these electrified cars. Yeah. And the only thing we've got so far is a Pacifica yeah. uh, and an upcoming Jeep 4 by e Yeah, yeah, that's right. And those are hybrids. They're still not full-blown all-electrics. This is an all-electric vehicle, not a hybrid. And everything I'm hearing about it, it's actually pretty damn good. It's just a real pity that we can't get it. But who knows? That could change with the new Stellantis um, facial cream. Sorry, a uh, company that. Sorry, it's just so funny. Yeah, to say. I know Stellantis. It's, 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 you know, of course, uh, FCA merged with our uh, friends in Peugeot, mm -hmm. uh, and the new company, which is slowly starting to take shape, is going to be called. Still, I think that sounds like a drug company. To me. It's yeah, but fortunately, we don't have to say that. So they're going to still keep some other names. That's just a holding company. So. And speaking of Peugeot, that's yeah. the next car to listen. By the way, I would say, you know, we haven't got any French cars, <laughs> any French cars. Right, and so there's a bunch on our list. Uh, yes, since the Lacar, right? That was the last one that, actually, and that was a horrible car. Well, there were some Peugeots that were at 505s and 504s, whatever that were in the states for but a little while. Officially, there were no Peugeot. Yeah, there were. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I owned one. Yeah. Well, I, I blew it up. Was this gray market or was this? No, 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 no. no. They used to sell like... Peugeots. Yeah, I bought it in California. Get out. No, no, really. It, it just it was, and it was an awesome car too. Really, really cool and uh, terribly unreliable because there's just no parts. Well, the, the car that uh, Zach put on the list, and I know nothing about this car, so I'll leave it to you, the Peugeot 208 or the E208. Yes, yes, so the 208, yeah, it's it's a great car. You know, the thing is, is that I think the French really do excellent small cars. And they're just so close to being almost perfection and then they do something weird and screw it up. This car is kind of a half and half with that. The E version, I've heard good things about, but at the same time, haven't driven it, haven't driven any new Peugeots at all. So it's a big question mark, and I don't want to pass judgment, but I, you know, we do read other periodicals, and they're pretty positive about these cars. Yeah, and the one that uh, I can actually talk about is the next one. A lot of these are electric because the Europeans have gone uh, seriously into electric yes, cars. Yes, they Place, have. Places like Norway. Oh, my God, Norway is like, like crazy. like 80% of cars are electric. But the one that really gets my blood flowing and I'd love to actually be able to buy is the Honda E, the little electric Honda that's got this huge screen that you can turn into a fishbowl. Yeah, you know the Honda E which is pictured behind me, when that came, well, okay, the, the concept was even cuter than, than this. It was just an adorable car. It was one of those cars you just wanted to hug. And it's rear drive, it's got like almost a perfect 50-50 weight distribution between. It is once again, according to overseas accounts, a fantastic driving little car. Though. It is a little pricey. It's a little pricey. Yeah, and it's, you know, it, I would put it against vehicles like, say, the, the one we have driven, which is the Mini E, right? 
That's a great little car. But this you, one's supposed to be just as good. You know why Honda should bring that car in? Because that car is the new DNA of electric Hondas, right? Yeah. That car represents like what Hondas are going to be like. And once again, you know, we get the Clarity, which was this like 1950s Buick that Honda <laughs> somehow built. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it was a little ridiculous. Right, and it only had like 80 miles of range. I think that one's got about 120 miles. But it does represent all the best thinking. And, and it, you know, to, to me, I always hate this idea, and sometimes Volkswagen does this a lot, where like they give us like the the downgraded or tuned down, ver down. down version of, and it, it, you know, out of all the car companies that we're talking about, Volkswagen has really gotten in its own way in terms of actually bringing cars here that sell. They oh, seem yeah. to make, be making decisions in Wolfsburg and not in America for what they, you know, think about this, right? At one point, when I was a young lad, right, the only foreign car you could get in America was a Volkswagen, right? Everything was, you know, GM or Ford. And then if you wanted something that wasn't that, a Volkswagen was it, right? Mm. And Volkswagen owned that market before the Japanese came and they completely kind of gave it away to the Japanese. There's, there's so many things to be said about that, but, uh, and we will cover a lot of Volkswagen on these lists. And, that's, and I think Honda is making that same mistake, because I think that the Honda E represents what electric Hondas are going to be, and yet, you know, they're not bringing it here, because they think we don't like city cars, because they think we don't like newest technology, because they think we won't pay a lot of money for a small car. There's a lot of reasons you may not want to bring it here, right. and all of them are stupid. Yeah, uh, the one thing about this Honda is that in the future, Honda and General Motors went into a, a um, partnership uh, doing batteries, the ultimate batteries that are going to be going into GM products, and it sounds like they're going to go into Honda products. So we will be getting a Honda EV soon, but it's most likely going to be an SUV. Something cool and sporty like this, it doesn't sound like it's coming here. Yeah, and Honda, you know, trust in our market and the people who buy your cars you know and don't it's whenever a manufacturer like tries to overthink the customer base right mm -hmm. when they have like preconceived notion of what americans want uh that's when you get into trouble uh, and uh, you know the, the thing that happens in europe and i grew up in europe to a large extent right they have a lot more choices i remember i was at the airport uh in munich and i got a book of all the european cars and it was like this thick and i'm doing like a two inch little symbol with my fingers. Yeah. Right? Here in America, we have a lot less choice, but we get a lot more value for our money. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't mean we don't appreciate choice. And it doesn't mean we don't appreciate for, you know, we won't pay for cool tech, we won't pay for modern styling, we won't pay for, you know, what's cool and what's hot. And somehow the, the, the American market has gotten this, like, you know, dumbed down, you know, we'll give you all the leather and all the bells and whistles, but the coolest stuff you can't get. Yeah, you know, the thing is with this Honda E and a lot of other vehicles in this class, if they could price it, if they could drop down that price, give it like, say, I don't know, 200 mile range, make it like the original Honda Civic or the CVCC, something Yeah, I disagree. Cool make it expensive. No, no. Screw it. Make it, exp make it expensive. Make I it can't cool. afford expensive. I can I don't, afford... No, you can't, but there are people who can. Yes, but so you can have both, is my point. But imagine if they were able to undercut Tesla and bring in something like this. Once again, to... see, that's what I'm arguing about. I don't mm. think that we necessarily have to have the cheapest in everything. I think, I think there's this just natural, like, gut knee reaction where it's got to be cheap somehow to compete. I'm like, no, make it cool, make it expensive, and people will pay for it. No, no I, I disagree. It. I disagree. I think that, that we really need, especially with electric vehicles, we need entry-level solid dude, cars. Dude, I, I, I'm going to argue with you on this, right? Yeah. You can go and lease a Leaf today for 89 bucks. A, a, a Leaf with 240 miles of range. Yeah. For eighty nine bucks a month here in Boulder, you can go lease one of those right now. It's and, nowhere and, and, near and, as cool as this. But I'm saying, and they're, and they're stacked up like cordwood. Yeah, that's well, that's because they're not very cool. But they're cheap, right? So? That's cool. That's yeah, exactly. That's make cool. it expensive. Uh, you know, there's a but cheap and cool. Yeah, it would sell. No, no, cheap. Uh, I, you know, I remember reading like a business case study for the guy who invented uh, Austrian guy, right? Mm. Who invented Red oh, Bull? Oh, Red Bull. Yeah, I know right? about that. Yeah, right. Red Bull's crazy expensive, and they asked him. Right, he went to like Asia and he found this energy drink, which is basically caffeine, right? Yeah, yeah. And they asked him like, like, you know, why is Red Bull so expensive? And he said, how else will people know it's cool? <laughs> yeah, so you're pricing to be special. Yeah, which is the same thing that they do with luxury vehicles. Well, the point is, is that nonetheless, we're not getting this car. It doesn't sound like it's going to get anytime soon, regardless if they go expensive or cheap. It's still not coming here which is a shame. But what we are getting is eventually an electric Honda EV 
SUV crossover, which is what everybody's buying now. Right. Everybody wants a crossover EV, which and, I don't and get. And maybe that's why the next car isn't coming, which is the Volkswagen ID3. Yeah, the ID3 is another one where I say it's, it is inexpensive and it's super cool. Uh, we actually know somebody who's recently driven one with a uh, correspondent overseas, so to speak. Unfortunately, we're not getting it. We're getting the ID4. The ID4 which they're going to build in Chattanooga at some point. You, eventually, they're going to build it in Chattanooga, but it is uh, basically a crossover. Eventually, we're going to get the ID Buzz, which I actually am really excited about. That's their minivan, but that's later on. This vehicle, the ID3, is sort of like a GTI in terms of size. It's like an e-golf. Yeah, an e-golf. It's like the new version of the e-golf. But it's, but it's a completely bespoke platform for these right. electric vehicles, and it's supposed to be brilliant, and we're not getting it because no soup for you. Yeah, and once again, you know, because Americans are big and tall and fat and we need to have crossovers, so we don't... I mean, that's kind of how I feel when, when these car companies say, you can't have the cool stuff, we only give you the big old crossover. Yeah, they you have to look like, at their like return on investment, and the thing is, is that they have people projecting this stuff rather than trying to put time and energy into advertising it. There's an awful lot of Americans who would appreciate vehicles like this. The next one would not be priced... This one should have been here like two years ago, Nathan. This would sell... People would line up around the block around the block to buy this next one. Which one is it? You this? drove it. I, oh, Volkswagen again, yes? Yeah, California. Damn straight. The van. The California. Little, the, the van. What a magnificent vehicle. Talk about like ergonomically right. Talk about like in timing it's right with van life, you know. Even how even Mercedes has figured out that they could sell, you know, very expensive vans here. Yeah. Uh, but for some reason, Volkswagen will not bring the California. Man, but they've the, got this incredible history, right, of vans in America. Yeah, yeah. They, they, I don't understand. I am absolutely dumbfounded, dumbfounded by the fact. By that. Yeah, dumbfounded I, by that. Absolutely. Decision. And here's the crazy part. A couple of, about two, was it three years ago, two years ago, Andre and I went to California, <laughs> Southern California, and they had a whole line of these vans, and they let a bunch of journalists jump in these vans and go camping out in the mountains in California and have a great time with the California van. And the whole purpose of it really was for their... I'm jealous. You got to go. Yeah. I, well, how often do you get to go to things? Come on. The point is, is that when I had to sleep in the same van as Andre. <laughs> Come on. So anyway, the whole point is, is that we got to all do wheel this. All-wheel drive. All-wheel drive with a great powertrain. Zippy, fairly efficient, very comfortable, easy to drive. And we even took it slightly off road. We we camped in it, and such cool features too, right? Amazing features, like, like the, which you know, is you can a small out the windows. Yeah, you, you know, there's like built-in camping chairs. Well, well and it, tables. it's like a Westphalia, but yeah. it's like the modern version of that. Oh my god, it's so cool! And, and just a really super cool van. And it, I remember when we put the, these videos on, we th we did like three different videos, and we put them out there, and they did well. But the point is, almost every other comment was, "Why the hell is in here?" Yeah, Where the hell's my van? You know, and they're expensive in Europe. They're like between 50 and 70, 80 euros, 80,000 euros. Right? Yeah. That's, a, that's a lot of money. But, you know, Mercedes is selling the uh, four by four uh, van at, you know, much more than that here. Oh, yeah. You know, easily 80K if you can get, if you can get one. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, and, and, and it's big, right? And they have a Metris, which doesn't really compete because it's only front-wheel drive. No, no, front it's rear-wheel drive. It's rear-wheel drive, but not all-wheel drive. Yeah, I don't think there's an all-wheel drive version so, of the So metrics. there really isn't, you know, a, a direct competitor to this, at least not until Ford gets the... Um, well, they don't have a they don't have a camping version of the of the four x four connect either. So. No, no, I mean, you'd, you'd have to go yeah. to like a, a subcontractor. This is a factory, yeah. you know, vehicle that you can buy at least in Europe, and and they're always looking for white space. Here's yeah. the whitest of white space, the emptiest. Empty, of white face yep. and um, you know nope we're not going to bring it I don't get it it's a real shame because it's a hell of a good van now the other two cars that this is interesting Ford eventually did bring and they stopped because they stopped building cars here and that of, of course is the Ford Focus and the Fiesta and I'm talking about the ST versions which are the ones that I would be lusting for yeah I, overseas they're still selling these things still yeah. building there's a new them. one right there's a new one there's a new one uh, we, we love the way they look. We love the way we the old ones drove. We had the Fiesta ST. We had that Fiesta ST, and I gotta tell you, what a great little car that was. It was just such a rewarding little ride. It's one of those that I kinda regret not buying off of the studios when we decided to get rid of it, but I think we traded it in on a pickup truck, right? Uh, no, we traded a pickup truck on, on it. Uh, oh, do we, do we trade it? No, we did. We traded it on the Rebel. You're right. Yeah, I thought yeah, it, we, I thought we it went into the we, Rebel. We, we, so which makes pick sense. Up the car to pick up, yeah. Right. I yeah. mean, you know, let's face it. Now. And the thing is, is that, you know, these cars, these 
fun, sporty hatchbacks. So there is an audience here in the United States for them. The thing is, is that they're looking at a massive return and they have to look at a minimum return. And you know, I, I'm not going to go into the business sense of you know counting. Well, it, it takes it takes courage, Nathan, and it yeah. takes you know. I mean, the bean cutters are going to be like, this is how much it's going to cost, right? This is how much you're going to sell, right. and this is how much you're going to lose. But at some point, you know, an executive has to say, I don't believe that. I think that this is how much we're going to make mm -hmm. as opposed to how much we're going to lose. Uh, but yet both these cars were here and now once again they're the forbidden fruit. There was a point in time when Ford had the Mustang here, the Focus, um, you I know, think, ST here. I think I mean, they made money on them. I don't think. Oh, I'm left. sure they did, but I, they just. I think that they were looking at their profit margin, and it wasn't quite big enough for them. That's what I think. And they just said, you know, we're, we're doing trucks from here on, except for the Mustang. And it's a real shame. I really do miss those hatches, man. They were awesome. The, this, the next one on the list is probably the one that I, I um, wish we had the most. It's the Suzuki Jimny. Oh my God! I know, I know, I know. A little oh baby Jeep. It's affordable. This is this is the car that you're talking about. Yeah. Affordable, all wheel, well, four, four by wheel four, drive, four, four wheel drive. Right? It doesn't exist. It's like your old Samurai, but but better, uh, but better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's. Uh, I've talked to a lot of you guys overseas. Um, you know, we, you've sent us pictures and videos, and they've been great. And not only the the new one, but even the previous generation one, which has a much better ride and much better performance than the old one that I had. And these things are epic. They're great off road. They get decent mileage. They're. I, I mean, we don't have that category of vehicle, right? We have a Wrangler, which has gotten crazy expensive. Yeah, even the base model Wrangler. Good luck getting one under thirty grand. Exactly. And then you can you know you could go to something like. Uh, like the Renegade, right? But that's not the same thing. No, this it's is, not. It it's not. Range, the Renegade's right? a car. It's it's right. an off-road capable car to a certain degree, but it's nothing like the Jimny. Yeah, and there's you know the Forerunner, but that's going to be expensive. So imagine if you could take something with actually you know a low-speed transfer case right. that has solid axles. Uh, that actually is an off-roader and make it small and affordable. Right. Think of it as a much, much more affordable, like, like capable a, like little a, Jeep. A, yeah, like a, like a Subaru Crosstrek, but actually with the real... The real the, serious off-road off kit. Yeah, body on frame. I don't, I don't know what the Jimmy's not. I, it, I is, it, it is. is. It, yeah, it's a little truck. Yeah, it's a little truck, yeah, and not a little car. Yeah, for those of you who don't know the United States, uh, Jimny is the Suzuki Samurai, but the modern version of it. So basically that's what it is, and it's just... It's phenomenal. And there was a lot of rumors that, um, you know, they thought about maybe finding a way to bring it over here, going through another network. No, that never happened. And the closest we're going to ever get to getting one of those here is going south of the border. I hear that they're going to start selling them in Mexico. And if they do, Roman, you and I are going on a Mexican holiday after COVID. <laughs> yeah, I, I also, I think, Red, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but that because of emissions, that they're also going to stop selling them in uh, Yeah, I, I heard that they're yeah. stopping them. Europe actually is stopping be, as well. Which would be a real shame. but it, uh, it just crushes me. Such a great little car. And another one in that same vein is the uh, Dasha Duster. Uh, and that's kind of like a cool-ass compass. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Not, it's not quite an off-roader, but it's just a really cool, you know, the, the let's face it, the Compass has become kind of mundane mm. in some ways, you know what I mean? It's yeah. Kind of, well, this is actually a proper little uh, setup. It's got a rear drive, right? It's a yeah. front engine rear drive. The, the, he says Dasha, it's Dacia, according to some other people. So yeah, Let uh, us know in the comments he's, he's He's Eastern European, so I can't help it. Dasha. Uh, um, Dacia. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, is that, you know, that, that vehicle, the Duster, is um, actually kind of a little rugged, off-roady type vehicle. Think of it, remember the, the Suzuki uh, Grand Vitara and those types of vehicles? Yeah. Very similar to those. Very, yeah, very similar. Exactly. All right, um, this is the only Alfa Romeo that we don't get. This is the one that I want, actually. <laughs> no, it's the fun one. <laughs> the Giulietta. You want to, okay, so here's the story about the Giulietta. Uh, this is what happened to Roman and I when we went to Texas. Oh, yeah. yeah. To drive. Yeah, we got it for a while. It, the Dodge the, Dart. The Dodge Dart, start, yeah. So yeah, we went I to. I got the, completely snookered. Oh, man, he was so angry. So, I was, so I'm still mad about yeah, that. Yeah, so I, I don't mind the Dart, but, but Roman is just like, look. You guys at FCA said that this is going to no, be... No, no, it's worse than that. I became pretty good friends with the product manager for the Dart. Yeah. This is before it was called the Dart. Yeah. Right? And we were at the Chicago Auto Show, and they were kind of, they were kind of you know, just chatting, and I said, you know, tell me about this car. And he said, well, this is going to have European pedigree. Basically, yep, we're taking said, yeah. the Giulietta, uh, because it was, I think, recently um, uh, Fiat and uh, before it was FCA had just merged, right? Yeah, they and just so, did. Yeah, and so we're going to take the Giulietta, we're going to take the chassis tuning, and we're going to bring it to America. I'm like, wow! Now that is like bringing 
you know, like authentic Italian uh, spaghetti. Yeah, you know, to, uh, to, to our market. To, yeah, to our market. I was yeah. so excited. I, I mean, I, I got myself, you know, driving the thing down PCH one, you know, with <laughs> with almost a cigarette in my mouth. I don't smoke, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like cappuccino on the other hand. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was the, the promise was huge. <laughs> The delivery, <laughs> and then they came not out with, so much. Then they came out with the dart. <laughs> now, here's the problem. I think that the dart had potential. First of all, the name was just inappropriate. It so wasn't a dart. I should have called it anything but the dart. And then the second thing was, it just lost all the dynamic quality of what they had overseas, and they watered it down I don't for the American any audience. In the dark. Huh? I don't think there's any Julieta in there, the dart. There is a little bit, but it's just not enough to really make that thing a good seller. And it just... It, it came close, but it just right, didn't then, have it. Here, what's the coolest thing about the dart? Uh, the seat, uh, the passenger yes, front seat exactly right. that opens <laughs> up and you can put stuff in it. Yeah, the, the front passenger seat lifts up and you can put stuff underneath it. Yeah, you can hide stuff in there. And the problem with that is, of course, by doing that, the seat isn't as comfortable as the driver's seat for your tush, which I discovered over a long period of time. But okay, but they did. Okay, I'll give it. I'll give it to you. I'll give you one thing. Hmm. And this is bad, actually. They did make it European sized. Yeah, so they, for, for for a mid-sized American, it was way too small. It was a little tight. Um, I, I had one for two weeks, and it was the little, the, the small engine with the, uh, the the manual transmission. Yeah, I enjoyed driving it, but when passengers got in it, they weren't too thrilled about it. I didn't mind the way it looks. Other people did. Uh, it's one of those things on the fence. But with, with Roman, he was so angry during the entire time we were there. He was just like, you know, I don't know if I could do this video. He was just like. Rrr, rrr. Hulk and Twice out. that's happened to me, where they snookered me. Once was with that, and the other one was, was I think it was a Mark Six or Mark Five, a Golf R. They took me to Europe, oh, yeah, and then the yeah, one we right. got didn't have launch control, didn't have the cool lights, didn't have the cool Recaros, had less horsepower. <laughs> and I was over the moon in that review, and then Volkswagen announced, oh, by the way. You're not getting that. You're not getting that one. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're getting this American <laughs> version of it. Yeah, if you guys <laughs> want to see Roman angry, you should, those two things were definitely in it. But the, the point is, is that... Um, the um, Alfa Romeo has a really good car. Amongst all the vehicles they brought us, the best one that they have isn't the one we have. All right, Nathan. Um, the Vauxhall Corsa. I know nothing about the yeah, Vauxhall Corsa. Yeah, the Corsa is... Um, okay, so... It's a GM. It used to be a GM. Well, it used to be GM, and the, the Corsa is a slick hatchback right up there with the Volkswagen GTI, the four-door and whatnot. Um, it's it's a really cool looking car. Uh, it's not something that I understand in terms of dynamics, although I am told that is actually a really fun car to drive, very economical, affordable, everything that's right up my alley. And no, we're not getting it. And more importantly, they used to bring in Buicks that were Opals, yep. and well, that's not happening anymore, so we're not gonna get it through Buick, but we're not getting it, period, ever. Yeah, Ever. yeah, and those Buicks didn't actually sell very no, well. No, they did okay. But they just, yeah, I know, I know, I know the Cascada. <laughs> that was Roman's I favorite saw, convertible. It's my guilty pleasure. I, I love that car. I that car was one. made for you. It was. No, seriously, it was made for you. I love the Cascada. It, it's, it's you have buttons. hair, so you can appreciate the, the convertible. It had a great working convertible top, had a nice ride, yeah. and it could hold golf clubs in the back. <laughs> Everything Roman needs. I just guilty pleasure. Yeah. Everybody else hated it. I loved it. I didn't right, hate it. Here's one that Zach put on the list, and yeah. I don't. I don't know much about this one either. The MX30. What is the MX30? Mazda MX30. Oh, oh, the MX30. Yeah. Um. That that's kind of. Uh, let, let, let's go to the next one. <laughs> right, even, even you're stumped about it. So that one's for you, Zach. I, uh, I, Zach, I, I don't. Uh, yeah. Zach knows his cars, so because the his MX30 word is not really. It's, uh, yeah, we don't know anything about it. All right. The next one I certainly know a lot about. Uh, the Volkswagen. An Amrock. Oh, the Amrock! My God, truck, why yeah. did that not show up here? Because of the chicken tax. That's what they're going to say. Totally. I, that, I asked them ten years ago, and they, actually on the Volkswagen trip, I was like, mm -hmm. you know, trucks are coming. You know, they're becoming red hot. Everybody in America, it's the next thing, and they're like, oh no, we have to build it in Brazil. No, and then we come cost, on. You know, and I'm like, did you know? And did you knew this, right? You knew that uh, to get the Sprinter in, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. Mercedes, right? Right. Would initially build it in Germany, then they would outsource it to a different company that took it apart, put right. it in two crates, then they would ship it to Charlotte, you know, and then they would not build it, but uh, assemble it in Reassemble Charlotte. it. Yeah, and, and they could still get by the chicken tax. It was cheaper to actually do that. Yep. Now, of course, um, Mercedes has decided they're going to build their van. The in whole Charlotte. van yeah, is yeah, being so they, built. They actually yeah. built the factory. But I'm just saying, you guys, and you know, the Europeans are so competitive. If Mercedes can take apart a van and ship it here, 
why couldn't you do the same thing with the Amarok to get past the chicken tax? It would sell like hotcakes. And then, of course, this was long before GM came up with their twins, long mm -hmm. before you know Ford brought back the Ranger. Volkswagen, once again, could have been selling. I would, I'm going to be bold here, and I think it's fair, 100,000 plus Amaroks a year. I will not debate you on that. I drove For the an last Amarok. seven years. Yeah, I drove an Amarok, the diesel. It was fantastic. It had more than enough capability to put, take on anything we have here in the United States. Now, granted, I know a lot of you are going, wait a minute, wait a minute, Ford and Volkswagen have a partnership where they're going to be building a pickup truck coming to the United States. Yes, we've heard about that. But 10 years ago, they could have brought the Amarok it, here. Instead, look, we, this, here are the cars. See if you remember these. Instead, we got the EOS. EOS, wow. Nothing more pleasurable to a proper double Y chromosome American than driving a vehicle that has you could, you eroticism can, painted all you over can, it. You can combine these two cars and they would have sold more Amroks in a month than they had in the entire production run. The yeah. CC. The CC, which by the way, I really liked. It's a cool car, but dude. It, it, no, they didn't sell that very many because Americans just really weren't into it. You know what Americans were into? Pickup trucks. trucks. Yep. Yeah, pick up and, trucks. That, and they were comfortable. The one I drove was comfortable. It was capable. It got amazing gas mileage, had great torque. It should have been here and it would have absolutely destroyed the entire network of vehicles that you guys are thinking about today. I bet you if they had brought in the California and the and the Amarok, it would have outsold all the other guy cars. I, combined. I, I agree with you. I like, think that, like in, in the first year, it would have out, those two would have outsold all the other cars combined. Not to mention the fact that they, you know, they have a giant factory in Chattanooga. They could easily, not easily, they could convert them over and actually start building those things for the United States, right here in in good old America with American workers. But no, they didn't do that. And I really, really wish they brought the Amarok here and the California, for that matter. All right, next one, Nathan, the Ford Puma. Yeah, the Ford Puma it's looks cool, really cool. It's a cool crossover, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. It's out of the crossovers kind of out like there. Escapish. Yeah, it, but yeah, but I think it's smaller. better looking. Yeah, it's better looking. Yeah, I think so. I, I just think it's a really good looking little. You know what? It, it should be where the Echo Sport is now. Exactly. It's really the Echo bring Sport. it over. Get rid of the Echo Sport. Sport. Put that out there and keep the name. It's a cool name. Yeah, yeah. Puma. Puma. How, how could you not? You know, Jaguar, Puma, any kind of cat is always good. Yeah, you know what? Bring back Cougar too. Yeah. yeah. I like Cougar in so many ways. Bring back Cougar. <laughs> right. Cougar and Puma. Let's keep it family friendly. Nathan. I <laughs> haven't said anything else. <laughs> All right. All right. Here's one that I really lost after because of Top Gear, of course. And I think uh, James May has his car. He does. Uh, the yeah. Alpina, Alpina A110, uh, yeah. which is just <sighs> this incredibly sexy, old school, you know, throwback car to, mm -hmm. to, to the original Alpina. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, is that uh, we're talking about a car that has. Uh, rally pedigree. I love old uh, Alpine, rally. Not Alpina, sorry. Yeah, Alpine and a it's just Alpine. the Alpine was just an incredible car. The modern version of it is supposed to be an amazing driver. Um, it does have components from Renault, just like the original one. Yeah. Um, mid, kind of a rear engine, mid engine Porsche 911 competitor to a certain degree. Uh, it's supposed to be an amazing car. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I could drive one of those just once. But it's not that expensive for what it is? No, no, not yeah. at all. I'm, but they're not here. There's not even a limited market for those things here. And I just, I wish they would find a great market way of bringing it in here, but uh, it's not going to happen. That is like soon. one of those quintessential European cars that we, you know, we will never get. Mm, no, we're like, never like going to get like it. Like the launches of old, right? The ones that have this. The old launches, yeah. Yeah, not the new ones, but the old ones. Mm -hmm. You know, like that, that have this like aura to them that have this pedigree that we just, you know, we were, we missed out on. So, yeah, that would be a great one. Yeah, and the other one in that same kind of category is the Renault, um, oh, God, how do you pronounce it? The, the uh, Menage. It's not the Menage, it's the. Um, I, I like calling it Menage. It's not Minaj, it's the Renault. Magan. Magan? Magan. Magan? I can't say. We, yeah, you know. it's Magan, but I, I call it Minaj. I, because it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm an American. It's the RS version, right? Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's a it's, hot hatch. That it's a hot, with, super hot hatch. Yeah, it competes with like the uh, Volkswagen. The GTI. GTI yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it is, it's a good looking car. Yeah. Actually, it, it's funny because Renault and, and uh, Nissan Magan. have. Magan? 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 It's Magan. Yeah, Magan, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Magan. And you'll correct us, guys, I'm sure you will. And yeah, please, please do. Please do, yeah. But I'm still going to call it Minaj, whether you like it or not. But the point is, is that. That vehicle is a sporty hot hatch, and it's a funny thing because Nissan and Renault have this uh, partnership. Well, it may not last very long, but <laughs> no, but while they have it, the best car that they built to get well sort of together is this vehicle, which we're not getting in the United States, which is a shame because we're getting CVT cars that are not very exciting. Yeah. All right. Let's keep going, dude. I completely agree. Uh, and this one's kind of weird. We were supposed to get it, and then it kind of fell on its face. 
uh, but it was a Mercedes EQC, right? It's your electric crossover. Yeah, what happened to that? Uh, it didn't do well. <laughs> they sold like 50 of them in Europe, and they decided that if they're not selling mm -hmm. in Europe, they're probably not going to sell here. But but the point is, Mercedes needs to get serious and bring an electric car over. They have all this tech that they're they're showing the entire world, and we haven't seen a damn thing. And what's happening is every year that these guys, BMW, Mercedes, all these guys wait. Tesla builds and builds and builds and builds and builds. So, so here's a funny story about the EQC, right? Yeah. It, it was being shown at the auto shows we were going to pretty mm -hmm. regularly. I remember we were in Detroit, and usually, you know, the, 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 the kind of language that you have to learn to read when you're at an auto show is not just what cars are showing, but where they're placed in the stand, right? Right. So in Detroit, it was out front, right in the corner. Like when you walked up from Mercedes, it was right there. The first thing you saw. First thing you saw, yeah. you know, <coughs> way behind. Even some of the other like cool GTs, right? All mm -hmm. that stuff. Uh, and then by LA, they had like <laughs> put it behind the I wall. Remember <laughs> that? We talked about that. Then I remember that. You know what they did? It was the weirdest thing because uh, Detroit and LA are very different car shows. Uh, you know, hopefully they come back in the future. But in the past, Detroit was really a very popular European show in terms of the European cars coming over here, so we got it. But really, if you think about it, Los Angeles is the more important show for European cars because a lot of the customers in California buy European cars. So you would think that their Halo car would be yeah, up front. Yeah, it was about to be introduced and I went to do a story on it. I'm uh -huh. like, where the heck? And it was like behind a wall. <laughs> kind of like a Klaus had to say, no, no, go around the wall and then maybe you'll see it. <laughs> it wasn't even in the stand. It wasn't even there. It was the weirdest thing. And it's like, it's what happened was somehow between those two things, the, the, the brain trust said, uh, you know what? Let's. Uh, we're not going to sell this, or we're not. We're not really that interested in selling it. Let's move it over. It doesn't make any sense. And by not explaining that, we can only make assumptions. All right. So uh, Mercedes. I think they know that they need an electric car. You oh know. God, yeah, they do. I mean, you know, Volkswagen's finally gotten serious with it. Audi's got the e-tron, the e-tron Sport back, the e-tron yeah. GT. Porsche has theirs, you know. Yeah, the Tacon. Um, um, uh, BMW is going to have their the i next the, the the new electric crossover, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Mercedes. Still I'm not waiting. seeing anything. Still waiting. All right. Uh, the next one is uh, easy for me to pronounce. Uh -huh. You want me to pronounce it the right way or the way that people say it in America? Do both. Your first, first do the right way. The, the Czech way is Škoda, which means Škoda. Shame. Škoda means shame. That one I can pronounce. And the right way or the one that everybody else says, Skoda. Yeah, right? I, 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 mean, I say Skoda. Yeah, Skoda. Skoda uh, on the car that, you know, I, I know the Škoda lineup really well. Uh, by the way, I hate saying that. I, we used to, I used to be a TV reporter, right? And we had an anchor who was Spanish, uh -huh. and he would always like say the overpronunciation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, it was like the you know. And tonight the uh, sandinistas. Yeah, <laughs> just kind of you know, yeah. put the extra. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I know. It, you know, but it, it depends on the people, of course. You know, but in your case, you're Czech, so you're allowed to overpronounce it. You know, so I'm going to say it's Skoda, uh, but the Kodiak is the one that you know is cool. That's that's kind of the the, the most off roady of them. It used it, to be it called looks the, cool. It used to be I like, called the Yeti, I think. It's it, I think it replaced the Yeti, yeah. and it, it's one of those vehicles that just looks really cool. Now, I believe it's based on a lot of uh, Volkswagen mechanicals, am I yeah, correct? Yeah, all the Škodas are, yeah, right? Yeah. right? They're all based on either the... Like, Which the, is a shame, because old school Škoda had um, rear drive, what, air-cooled engines yeah, and stuff some, like that? Yeah, they had some, the 120, they had some really yeah. cool... Uh, yeah, they were like totally dangerous, like they'd kill you by looking at them. <laughs> and they'd overheat. Yeah, they'd overheat and explode, or so, you know, crazy stuff like that, but they rallied them, too. They were kind of cool. But some of the old ones, like the Octavia, they, you know, they, they brought those names back. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I always wonder if, 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 as a brand, it would do well in America. If, if, because in, in, in Europe, it's kind of like SIA, right? It's kind of, you get Volkswagen up here, right. which is kind of, you know, more premium. And then underneath it, you can get basically the Skoda, Skoda version of it for less, right? So you can get the Skoda version. Uh, and people, especially in the UK, love their Skodas. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I think it would they're do well. Actually, they're, they're, they're considered more reliable than Volkswagens. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think they could do well with it here. Once again, Volkswagen... You know. There's a problem. There's a problem. What? I'm going to tell you right now. Can you imagine my buddy Earl going, I want to buy me a Skoda. I want a Skoda. You know, you know I, I'd say that is true, but the Koreans did it with Kia. Kia is easy. Hyundai, which is actually harder to pronounce than Skoda. Well, because some people just look at that name and just go, Hyundai. <laughs> but you I'm know, saying, if they could come in here... I think Škoda could come in here and do the same thing. I, it, yeah, maybe, maybe. I, I don't know. I don't think Volkswagen is going to invite an additional competing brand you know that actually is using the components. Built? Huh? You know where they're built? Uh, in the Czech Republic? In Malaboslava. 
See, Ma- that's a tough one. Ma- 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 I was Stop. born in Prague, so that's why. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. he's kind of got that down. Um, okay, all right, let's, let's, let's keep going. <laughs> all right, uh, the next one is, um, you know, a car that uh, Andre would love. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, the Lada <laughs> Neva, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, now, they're still building these things, and, and I, they predate, like, water. <laughs> I, don't, and, I think there's air. One. I think they're like, who knows, you know. <laughs> they're ancient. It's an interesting vehicle because we're talking about, you know, it's 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 got, I believe, or it used to have a little Fiat engine and uh, not a lot of power, uh, but they're quite capable uh, and they've, they've actually rallied all over the world. Uh, coil spring suspension. Um, they actually have one. We did it on TFL Off-Road. We have a, um, if you go to tflofroad.com, we actually have a story on a lot of Neva that's a motorhome. They actually have a company that converts them. You know, 70, 80 horsepower pulling a giant <laughs> motorhome around the desert. That's not exactly the way to go, but it looks cool. Uh, and Andre would absolutely love to have one. And, you know, they still build them. So that's the crazy part. Yeah, and they sell them in Canada, I think. So you can't, Do they sell them in Canada? I think they sell them in Canada, yeah. So I think they're close, but no cigar. Great. When COVID ends, I think Andre's going to be hitting up But you can import them and they sell them. Well, he'll find a way. <laughs> you have to. Like, you still have a twenty-five year thing. He, he, you know, he'll talk to his, his Russian buddies. <laughs> Let, let's make a trade. We make a trade, yeah. And they're not cheap actually, because everybody really wants off-roaders, and they have a reputation for being really rugged. Yeah, they're really rugged, but uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there who's like, you know, you, you love them for a year, and then you hate them after that. That's that's what I've heard from a lot of people. And there's, you know, Russians are crazy about them because they're still building. Them. They're supposed to be like iron. They're just tough. All right, the next one, uh, we kind of sort of have, but we don't. And I'm talking about, I actually rented this car in Europe and drove mm. it on the Autobahn, which was crazy because it doesn't belong on the Autobahn. I'm talking about the Fiat Panda. <laughs> so it's like, the, we, we get the 500X, it's kind of built on the same chassis. They're similar, similar. But, but they're uh, not. Yeah, exactly. But the Fiat's like the true off-roader. I wish we could buy the original Fiat Panda yeah, yeah, 4x4. Cool. Yeah, the Pandas were way cool. They were super cool. I drove uh, about like 10 years ago, nine years ago, the Fiat uh, Panda uh, 100 horsepower. It was the fun car that I always wanted here in the States that we can never get here. A tiny little car, lots of go, lots of move. And the thing is, is that, you know, Europeans appreciate a small, spunky little hatchback. Americans, not so much by comparison. But man, it was great. And they have a Fiat, uh, the, the Panda 4x4, which is supposed to be epic off-road. We don't have it. Yeah, we get the 500X, which is kind of it's a, not, it's a, not a, the kind same of a, kind thing. of a watered-down version of a Renegade, right? Yeah, and they're bigger, too. The 500X is, is built for, you know, big, chunky Americans that they can fit in there comfortably. It's okay. It's not the worst Fiat out there, but the, there's, the, the, the Panda is so much more enjoyable. Uh, and the last car on our list is another Volkswagen. Gosh, mm. there's a lot of Volkswagens we don't get. The, there are a lot. Uh, and that's the Up, or the E-Up. Um, oh, yeah. yeah the, those, uh, those little tiny little guys. I think that would also do very well here. I, you know, it, it, the size of it is interesting. It's a tiny car. Yeah. But the funny part is when the Up came out, it actually was the size of the original Volkswagen Rabbit is in there, terms of wheelbase. Is there base. Up GTI too? Like a GTI version? There, there was. Yeah. I don't know if they're still building it this yeah. year. You know, it, when you ask Volkswagen about these things, like, hey, when's the Up going to come to these states? They'll, they'll kind of say, well, we talked about it, but it's, this doesn't seem logical to you. And you know, it's like, really? Because you're just using the Jedi mind trick on me? I really think it would work here. And no matter what, they're just absolutely not interested in bringing it here, which is a total shame. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I, I did move to Europe back uh, kind of in the 90s because mm-hmm. I moved back to the Czech Republic after I went from communist to capitalist. Uh, and I was like a kid in a candy store because I'd be like, you know, I'd be like, wow, wow, wow. Yeah, all, all these cool all, little cars. All, all these cars that, that we could, you know, that we could never get. Uh, and the one thing I did realize is the cars there are much more expensive. Oh, yeah. So, you know, we are blessed with having some of the most luxurious and least expensive cars. And, and that comes at, you know, the cost of choice, I think. Yeah, but, you know, choice at the end of the day is one thing that I think a lot of us just really want. We want to be able to choose what we want. And the bottom line is that every day that moves, you know, the, the, that 
everything moves away from us. We don't get those cool Especially cars. Especially the small ones. So when I was yeah. there, the ones that I really lusted after were like the Ford Ka. Remember that one? Oh, that, the original car was the, so cool. The Twingo. Right? Oh, the these Twingo were, was yeah. an interesting these car. These were these little tiny ass. That was the, one of the first cars I took on the Autobahn. Yeah, the Twingo? Yeah, it, yeah the diesel. It didn't go. It didn't move. <laughs> but, you know, and then there were, of course, all the smart cars. That we, you know, we, uh, got the, we got one of the smarts, but there were the Smart for Four. They had a little uh, they Sportster. Had a little roadster. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know? um, there were so many cool cars overseas. And, you know, I've, I've, I've been to China and there were some cool cars, obviously, you know, all throughout Europe, cool cars. We just don't get them. And if Especially we get them... the small ones, like in Japan also. Yeah. We, should, we were thinking about doing the next show on this, all the Japanese cars we don't yeah, get. Yeah, K-cars. Yeah, the K-car, the little, you know, the cappuccino, the little, uh, you know, all those 600cc little cool... Tiny little awesome cars. I love tiny cars. I know I'm a big fat American, but I just love tiny cars. And I've driven a few too. Um, thanks to Nissan, actually, I drove quite a few. But the point is, is that, you know, unfortunately, we don't get these really cool cars. And in some cases, some of these cars, especially Especially Volkswagen, I think would sell quite well here, and I think that they made a major misjudgment by not bringing them here. All right, well, you know, we love to read our comments, so if you're listening to this, uh, we can't read it, but if you're watching <laughs> it on YouTube, uh, leave us a comment. See, you know, let us know what cars you would love to see that we missed on our list that, that they should import in 2021 that would sell. Obviously, you know, there's a whole plethora of Peugeots and Renaults, right? Right. Uh, that, that we might get, because, you know, with Peugeot and FCA merchant. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe we're gonna get the DS. Well, I think we're gonna get some of the technology to kind of go over here and hopefully, hopefully, we get some really cool cars out of this uh, merger. That's what I'm hoping at least. Yeah, well, there you have it, guys. Uh, thanks for spending, uh, you know, a little bit over a half an hour with us uh, yeah. uh, on this episode of TFL Talking Cars. And uh, like I say, let us know in the comments below uh, what vehicles you've driven or you would love to see that you think would be successful here. Obviously, there's a lot of cars that you could bring over that may not be successful, but you know, we, we thought long and hard about this list. Yeah, yeah, and you know, guys, you know, keep in mind that you know we understand that there are other reasons, business reasons, and everything else that these cars can come over. All right. Before we go, yeah, which of these would you like? The one that you would really love to see. I would love to get the Amarok or the California. Actually, both of them books. I'm see. with you. I would love to get the Amarok. For yeah, the, the Amarok would be awesome. The California. Uh, you know, I got a family. That would be the perfect family. I, I would go. So, I would go so far as you know, if if you know, we have enough uh, you know revenue next year, bring those cars over. We'll be the first to buy them. Hell yeah. Yeah. Bring them here and, uh, oh, the Amarok. Can you imagine uh, our, our truck viewers yeah. watching that thing go up against all the other mid-sized yeah, or, trucks? Or, you know, do another version of No Pavement Needed with the uh, California. Hell yeah. yeah. I, 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 you sign me up. Yeah. I'll, I'll sleep in that thing, even with Andre. I'll there even you go, spoon. You got two cars sold right here. Yeah. And one car, one truck, actually. <laughs> one right, car, guys. one truck. Thanks for watching. Remember, uh, check out TFL Car, TFL Truck for honest and independent reviews. Uh, we appreciate uh, the fact that you guys tune in. See you guys next time. Ciao. See you later.